Hello everyone. Well, today we will be trying something new together. So far, I have been sharing most of my contemplations on Instagram when I was out in nature, getting inspired by nature, or when I was moving my body and enabling the thoughts emerging from that movement to spontaneously come out of me. So I was so much used to a more dynamic form of content creation when I was thinking and contemplating about some of my opinions or some of my thoughts about particular things. And this is my first time sitting still, <laughs> being alone, contemplating about a particular topic. So I would like to name this experimentation series as Coffee Chats. Hopefully this can reveal the spirit and the essence of this conversation too. I just want this to be really casual, like we are having a coffee or tea together. Currently, I'm having my copy, but depending on the time of the day, this could be a tea too. Today, it's a coffee. And I would like to invite you to replicate the same. So whenever you see this popping up on your YouTube, you can consider this as an invitation for a pause where you can just go and grab a coffee and tea and just drink a coffee or tea with me. I hope it works for both sides. Um, I would love to hear your feedback to see whether you see this format meaningful or insightful as well. So the first topic is art of conversations. I wanted to share my thoughts about the magic of conversations because so far I've been sharing many conversations on YouTube. And like I said, I've been doing most of my solo contemplations on Instagram. And I truly believe that both of them are very powerful, but particularly because I was sharing co-creative opportunities, mostly on the YouTube side, I would like to dig deeper why I love them so much and what's the magic in them. First of all, what does conversation mean? When you look into the definition of the word, it means turning together. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I always say it's like dancing together. What happens in a conversation is such a sacred space for emergence of new things beyond us. Um, I think I've been always a chatty personality. I always liked using language to understand myself and using language to express myself. So I might have an affinity for conversations throughout my life, even when I was a child. But I think my understanding deepened when I truly understand the power of conversations. Conversation is not just only a tool for us to understand ourselves better or express ourselves better. It's a very powerful tool for transforming ourselves, for healing ourselves for changing ourselves, for personal growth, for self-knowledge, for self-love. And I think I discovered this power at later stages in life. Primarily, for example, when I was in Harvard Business School, I was so impressed by the power of case method. For the ones who are not familiar with the case method, um, it's a very famous type of teaching modality where you read a particular case about a company. It could be 10 pages, 15 pages, outlining some characters and some data points. And it's an invitation for the conversation to happen. So when we read the case, the next day we go to class and 90 people in the same class make some judgments about their understanding about the case. And the power of case method is really in its diversity. When you bring 90 different people from different cultures, from different backgrounds, from different life experiences, from different personalities, although we read the same material, the same 10 pages with the same 
so-called concrete data points, our take on the case might be so different. And to me, this was the first time I truly realized the power of conversations. You can read the same thing, you can look at the same data, the same so-called reality, but what you see is so different. And seen this way, case method was really enabling me to see 90 different point of views and hopefully integrate them into me. Try to understand other people's point of views. Try to understand their perspectives. And hopefully try to turn with them together. It's not only me. How can I really dance with these opinions? So to me, this was really such a transformational experience. What was missing at that time was really, I was wondering why these transformational powerful tools are only being used for business education. <laughs> of course, that was the context that I was awakened to the power of this magical tool. But I started thinking and contemplating about why not to use this for personal transformation, collective transformation. And maybe because of what I was going through at the business school as an international student, I would admit it was not that easy to be a part of a very intense culture, uh, especially in the first year. The school was very intense too, and I didn't really have any time to navigate a transition. I just literally came to the United States and a couple of days later, the school started. So maybe as a way of finding my own balance in life, because I was also craving for some stability and some human connection just to compensate that scientific exploration that has been very intense, I started looking for a conversation community about more softer dimensions in life, the broader dimensions in life where I can hopefully bring different parts of myself together. Like I said, I think the science and the mind part was really delighted and happy growing every day, but my soul was craving for meaningful, deep conversations. And that was the time I actually started sharing this intent with a couple friends around me. I was staying at the Morris Hall, which is one of the dorms at Harvard Business School. And with a couple of friends living in the dorm, mostly internationals, we started having conversations. Um, I think it was bi-weekly or so. And very interestingly, it was on Tuesdays because Mondays were really quite busy. So we had hopefully more time on Tuesday. So Tuesdays after people are done with their cases, around 8 p.m., 9 p.m., we were coming out of our dorms and meeting at the entrance of the dormitory, Morris Hall, and we were grabbing our teas <laughs> and having deep conversations about life, about love, about cultural differences, what it means to be a human, what it means to have a meaningful life. Why are we in here? <laughs> what are we trying to do and how we can support each other? And although this came out of my own need for deeper human connections, it somehow resonated with a handful of people. And we started coming together regularly. It was at first a couple people, like two or three, then we started growing with time and with our intention. And this is actually one of the most memorable experiences I had from those days as well. And interestingly, um, not in the beginning of the journey, but somewhere towards the end, one of the new team members, when he joined, he actually told me that this is very similar to... The book Tuesdays with Mori. <laughs> and look at the sweet coincidences in life. We are having these discussions Tuesdays in the Morris Hall at Harvard Business School. And the book that is very similar to the nature of our conversations is Tuesdays with Mori. 
and I'm not going to spoil the book too much, but the book is actually about a student's conversations with his dying professor. And these are weekly conversations. And these are also deep conversations about life, life, meaning of life, and what it means to be a human. So it was just a sweet coincidence um, celebrating our intentions and celebrating our unity as a group. And to me, this was just another demonstration of the power of conversations. The power of a conversation is really bringing different sides together and allowing us to learn from each other, allowing us to grow with each other. And to me, it's such a healing journey too, because the more that we learn from each other, see our differences, the more that we understand our differences and respect our differences and integrate those differences into ourselves as well, we heal through this experience. It could start small with a couple people, a handful of people. But if we use the power of that diversity by inviting our hearts to unite each other, this could be such a delightful personal development, personal healing journey where we can grow together. And years later, after graduation, I came across another sweet synchronicity in life, um, an Irish poet I adore so much. John O'Donoghue was also talking about art of conversations and how they are actual powerful tools for personal transformation. And I just would like to take a second to reveal some insights from one of his contemplations. This is coming from a YouTube video I listened. The title of the video is Inner Landscape of Beauty by John O'Donoghue. And he talks about the power of conversations. When is the last time that you had a great conversation? A conversation which wasn't just two intersecting monologues, which is what passes for conversations a lot in this culture. But when had you lost a great conversation in which you overheard yourself saying things that you never knew you had? That you heard yourself receiving from somebody words that absolutely found places in you that you thought you had lost? And a sense of an event of conversation that brought the two of you to a different plane? And fourthly, a conversation that continued to sing in your mind? for weeks afterwards. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> to me, that is the true power of a conversation. In deep conversations, we can find lost parts of our souls in each other. We can see each other in each other's mirrors. And this is such a healing journey. And if we can really ignite something in you, that you didn't even know was there. To me, that is the true healing power of a conversation. So I hope this really helps us to honor art of conversation, art of human hearts, turning together, dancing together. And I hope in this world where our interactions are limited to quick one minute reels or quick messages, we can come back to the depth of humanity that's there in our hearts and we can take as much pauses, as much uh, breaks along the journey needed to really connect to our own inner wisdom and hopefully we can give ourselves enough time for these deep conversations to happen between human beings. Whether it's virtual or not is a different topic for contemplation but I think the true power resides in us. If we can really connect our inner wisdom and if we can bring that inner wisdom purely and openly as a gift to another in these conversations, we can really open sacred spaces to hear each other, to see each other, to learn from each other. And through that interaction, we can know ourselves better 
and hopefully we can love ourselves more. <laughs> With that, I would like to take a last sip from my coffee and hopefully invite you to have more artful conversations with each other where we can grow together. Thank you. See you next time.